All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the King and I Life podcast. It's your boy, Soul Touch of the Poet, and I got my YouTube cousin, the beautiful book of Genesis. Hey, what's, up? what's good? Yes, finally a sit down interview Uh-oh. that I've been waiting to do for Uh-oh. quite some time. Um, look, we just going to jump okay. into it. So, for the people out there, <laughs> give the people. A little background about yourself. Like what? Where? Where do you want me to start? It's so much. Y'all, my voice is a little scratchy still. I've been under the weather, but I'm going to do the best I can. Um, I don't normally sound like I've been smoking Marlboros, but, you know, y'all get it. Anyway, where, what what background do you want other than I was sick? Don't, don't, don't pay her no <laughs> mind. She talking about she sound like she <laughs> under the weather, but looking like she above the weather. So don't pay her no mind. So, I mean... You know, tell the people where you from, you know, some of your oh, hobbies, you, you know, what you do for, you know, that basic stuff, you know, the, okay. the initial date information. I am information. from Chicago. I'm not really from Chicago, but y'all know if we, if we live outside of Chicago, we claim Chicago. So <laughs> I'm from Chicago. Um, uh, let's see. Well, actually, I, I lived in the city of Chicago until I was 15. My parents decided they wanted to give Mm -hmm. me a future. You know, I don't know who told them to do that. So (laughs) they moved us to the burbs, you know, and turned my life upside down. I had to leave all my friends, everything I knew. Oh, my goodness. Um, But it was the best thing for me because, you know, I was typical teenage doing teen. No, I was probably doing atypical teenage stuff. I was just wilding out. They was like, no, we're not going for none of that. (sighs) <sighs> um so yeah that was it they moved me to the suburbs um i stopped being a knucklehead uh because i was in a different environment and buckled down uh. graduated high school early after failing before i failed everything including gym y'all how you fail gym how do you fail everything I, and gym? Like, my mother would literally right drop me off at the front door and I would go out the side door <laughs> after she drove off. So, yeah. Oh, so terrible, I, I had terrible. to like double time it. I was in summer school every year. Double timed it. I graduated high school early. Mm. Um, graduated high school in December. Got married right after in February at age 17 um got married in february i went off to college in april didn't come back for my high school graduation or anything i was just doing my thing um got married young we planned to wait five years before we had any kids one year anniversary found out we had a little bundle of joy bacon um Mm. You know, mm. did the typical thing. Struggling college student, had my kid, went right back to school. Um, then life started happening. Um, you know, two young people that shouldn't have been married, married, and I can relate to that. Things were going south for us, or so I thought. Um, that wasn't it started, that was like the uphill. Um so mm-hmm. I left school. I left college because, you know, personal life was interfering with my studies. I couldn't focus. Right. Came back home to my parents so that they could save me and a baby and him. Um, <laughs> came back home <clears throat> and, oh, and then we jumped out of the frying pan into the fire. Once I came back home, then... All hell really broke loose. Things got really really real. real. Um, And we stuck it out for 16 years until Mm. it came to a head and we had to had to check out because if not, then somebody Mm. might have been checked out. So, um, (laughs) yeah, it was it was rough. What happens after that? Um, after that, I was single for about five seconds and then ended up in a... She said mm-hmm, five seconds. About five seconds. Yeah, 
you know, signed the divorce papers and before you knew it, I was in another relationship. Ink, ink wasn't, wasn't even dry. dry. Uh, stayed there for a little over a year. Found myself single and I was single and mingling and enjoying my first time as an adult being single. Um, <laughs> mid thirties in my mid thirties. Um, and then uh -huh. that didn't last for long. I, let me see. I got divorced in 2007. Oh wait, I guess I got to go back. I got divorced in 2007. Oh, he Lord. died in 2008. Um, mm -hmm. I was in a relationship, you know, from 2008 until 2000, well, end of 2008 until the middle of 2010. Mm -hmm. In that relationship, I was single for a couple months, you know, maybe about five minutes that time. Um, <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> got in another relationship, ended up married again in 2010. Marriage from mm. hell. Um, about five minutes mm. after it started, I was ready for it to end. Um, oh, yeah. Man. I mean, just it was it was a different time <clears throat> in my life. Like I had, right. I had, um, I went into the marriage with for all the wrong reasons. Um, yeah, I did that the first time. Well, the second, the first time I was actually in love. You know, young love. Well, what we think is love, we don't really know any yeah. better. At the young age, that don't right? Even count that count at seventeen. Count, Come but, on now. <laughs> you know, as in after, after all of that, you know, sixteen long years, and and I can't say that it mm. was more good years than bad years. I I and I I took responsibility for the part that I played in it because you know I was young, I was stupid, I was doing right. you know, all the stupid stuff um, that young women do. Mm -hmm. um, and the next time. Like after that divorce, you know, well, you don't know because you're a guy, but, you know, as women, we go through something when we get divorced, we try and reinvent ourselves. You know, we come up with a whole new life. We cut our hair off. We want to lose weight if we can put on some extra pounds. Uh -huh, so, you know, I did all of that. <laughs> I did all of that stuff. Uh -huh. And I had been Catholic all my life. And I started going mm -hmm. to this church. There was a group of, you know, my female friends, some cousins, we had all gotten together, just kind of bored, you know, well, we were living double lives. We were, we were out in the streets, you know, in the bars, the lounges, everywhere turning up. <laughs> Uh -huh. And we were like, well, we can't do this for the rest of our lives. We got to turn our lives around. So somebody had the bright idea. Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's go to church <laughs> on Sunday. Nobody knew where to go. My cousin was listening to a pastor on the radio, and she was like, he's so funny on the radio. Let's, let's go over to his church and see if he's as funny in real life. So we were like, okay. okay, so it was like, I don't know, 10 or 12 of us that we go on a Sunday and we ended up like in the overflow and he's preaching. Of course, I get convicted from the overflow room. So I'm like, oh man, you know, feeling like God and came down and talked to me directly, you know, through this <laughs> man. So we started going to church, oh. um, like on Sundays and you know, once I started learning, you know, I had been in Catholic school all my life, but I really hadn't learned right. anything about the Bible. So I had this newfound knowledge and I was like on fire and, you know, I would go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I would take notes and then I come home and I'm like reading these scriptures and dissecting. So I'm like, you know, I'm recreating. I'm a whole new me, you know, right. um, Right. Yeah. Every, amen. Hallelujah. You know, but I was still tearing up the bars on Saturday night. Um, you know, I was like, I'm going to get there eventually. Um, at least I'm in the building, right. you know, some days, some days <laughs> right. I was, I man, listen, some days I was in the building.